What do you got here? Um, I've got some of these bills from the 19th century. Do you know anything about them? Um, I really don't. What you have here is education money. To like fund education or? No, it was just to educate people about beautiful works of art. For the time, that was really risque to put bare breasts on bills. Yeah, I can see. Let me check that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to come to the pawn shop today to sell some old currency. I'm kind of scared because I'm supposed to be getting married in a month, and I spent $7,500 on this. If I don't get my money back, I'm going to have one pissed off fiance. We have uh, Bolton, an inventor of the steamboat, and that's Morris right there, Morris code. And it's like one of the few bills where Martha Washington's on it. In 1896, the U.S. government issued silver certificates that were educational notes. The reason they did this is because if you lived in a rural community, you would never get to see art. There were no nearby museums. So they figured, hey, let's put them on money. So where in the world did you get these? I was at an estate sale. I got caught up in this auction, and man, I just really hope I can make something out of it. Do you mind telling me what you paid for them? 7,500 bucks. I'm always getting into some type of trouble. Yeah, <laughs> it happens yes. all the time, man. <laughs> But this money is just, it's beautiful. I mean, it's the prettiest paper money the United States ever made, and arguably some of the prettiest paper money ever made in any country. Is the artwork, you know, have anything to do with the value of it? Well, well that's one of the reasons why these are so collectible. But paper money is weird the way it's graded. There's 70 different grades of a piece of paper money, and the grade on these things is so important. The difference between a 50 and a 55 is thousands of dollars on a bill like this. Wow. This is worth anywhere from like $200 to $25,000. Really, depending on the grade? Depending on the condition of it. Wow. And when we start talking money like that, I have to have someone look at it. Let me call up a buddy of mine. He knows everything about this stuff so we can get a better understanding of the grade of it. No problem. That sounds good. This guy is out of pocket 7,500 bucks, which makes me either a genius or an idiot. So I'm gonna get my buddy Leonard in here to have a closer look, and hopefully he'll have some good news. Used to be a grader for the American Numismatic Association, and I've been buying and selling coins and paper money currency for over 45 years. These are uh, some important banknotes. These are silver certificates. From 1896, this is what we call the educational series. So they all mean something? They all mean something. This one is the $1 note. This is history educating youth. You know, we young country. History's going to educate us. On the back, George and Martha. The $2 note, we've got science, electricity, and steam. On the back, we've got Robert Fulton. Right. Samuel Morse. Right. Okay, and science is, is presenting electricity and steam to commerce and industry. Okay. In this one, we've got Civil War heroes, Grant, Sheridan. And this note shows electricity is the dominant force in the universe. This is 1896, they figured that out. And I thought this was just a bunch of naked women on a bill. <laughs> The grading of these notes is what's important as far as their value. Were the notes used? How much were they used? Are they folded? Are they stained? Are they crisp? Are they nice and bright? Here's what we got here. The one dollar note, we got a centerfold right here. Okay. It's light, it's hard to see, but it's there. And this note's worth $700. Two dollar notes got a horizontal fold, three vertical folds. This note's $2,500. Make well, you feel a little that's better? That's a little better. This note's got a very light center fold. It's the most desirable note of the three. This note is worth um, $7,500. A little over $10,000 for the lot. Thanks, Leonard. Anytime. Take care, buddy. 7,500 turned out to be a decent gamble for this guy, because most notes I've seen like this are beat to hell. They've been circulated. But these are in amazing shape. There's no question I want them. So now I'll let you know what they're worth, how much you want for them. I'm thinking 10 grand. Um, I'm thinking eight grand. I just, you know, spent $7,500 on these, and the risk I, you know, took is just worth more to me than $500. Um, I'll let you make a thousand bucks off me and not a dime more. So 8,500? 8,500 is it, period. You gotta, you gotta think, man, a thousand bucks is a good profit on a complete gamble. You know what? 
for a thousand dollars. All right. Eighty-five hundred. Corey, you want to write him up? Yeah, let's go do some paperwork. I'm so glad I kept my poker face. When he started to grab him, I thought he was out the door. Hey, how's it going? How are you? Pretty good. And it's a sword. It is a sword, but not just a regular sword. It's a special sword. What makes it so special? This was a King George corset sword, which is very rare, and it dates from around 1780. So this could have been a Revolutionary War sword. Guy definitely had a smaller hand than me, because yep. I can't even get my hand through this. My hand won't fit on it. <laughs> yeah. I have a King George III era corset sword. I am a collector, and I'm passionate about military weapons, and especially swords. I am asking for $5,900. If I'm able to make a sale today, I would like to take my wife for a European vacation. That's cool. For an officer in the Navy or the Army, one of the most important things when you went out was, was your sword. It had to be cool. This was a nice sword. You know, yeah. it wasn't the super rich, but it was definitely an officer's sword. You have the royal cipher right here, and we got like, these gold inlays like it, that. Sure. Look at the horse head. Look at the teeth on that horse bed. This is, looks like it to be bronze, this right here. What I really am impressed with is his bluing right here. Um, it takes a really good swordsmith to create bluing well enough the last couple hundred years. Yeah. It's short, very short, as a matter of fact. How much do you want for it? I'm looking for $5,900. It's interesting. Um, I'm sort of puzzled why it's so small. But the horse head, um, I know it's desirable. There's not a whole lot of them out there. So I, I'd really like to call in Alex. He's my go-to guy for just about everything military. And he can tell us if we have a Revolutionary War sword here and answer a bunch of other questions. So give me a few minutes. Sure, thank you. So I've been doing this for a long time, but I do not know everything. So I'm happy to learn what the expert has to say. Well, here's the little sword I told you about on the phone. Yeah, it's cute. It just seems odd to me being so short. And also, I have no idea what this thing's worth. OK. Can I pick it up? Sure. OK. Thank you. Oh. It is a British late 18th century military issue horse head cutlass. OK. Typically, horse heads were for cavalry or for land soldiers, not for naval soldiers. This chain guard really takes it away from the sense of a combat sword and more into the dress sword type of thing. Blingy. Blingy. Perfect. <laughs> That's GR for George Rex. Rex is king in Latin, so it's George III. Uh, and then on the back, you have the lion and the unicorn and the British coat of arms. OK. Well, was it the Revolutionary War at all? No, but it dates from about the Revolutionary War or early Napoleonic Wars. But there's a lot to like about this sword. Horse heads are rare, and they are sought after in the collector's market. This one in particular is pretty well detailed. The only thing that really sort of sticks out for me, this indentation that runs along the blade is called a fuller. Typically, a fuller is designed in the blade in ends a few inches before the end. This fuller, there's not a border here. My feeling is this sword was shortened by a few inches. So in value terms, it does impact it. So what do you think it's worth? I think if it were in the full length, it would be in the $5,000 or $6,000-ish range. Based on how it is here, I think a retail value is $3,500. OK. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate yes. it. Thank you. Thank you. So all that said, what do you want for it? $3,300. Give me two grand. I, I, it's a fair price. I, I, I'll go $2,300. Can't do it. If it, we had the rest of the blade here, you would have the rest of your money. My my absolute best price is twenty eight hundred dollars. Okay. And, and I, All right, it, so twenty three fifty. No, twenty eight hundred dollars. I mean, I, I, I I'm not I gonna go any more than that. And I, I can't I can't do it. All right. Well, maybe next time. Next time. All right. Thank you. Change your mind. Come and see me. Okay. Thank you. Really, I would have paid the rest of the money if I had the rest of the sword. Hey, what's up, man? Hello. <clears throat> 
I have a 1956 Pez space ray gun. Pez candy I always thought was disgusting. They started off as an aid to get people to stop smoking. You know, so it was a little round tablet that tasted like mint, but people didn't want to quit smoking. Uh, so they decided to turn it into fruit flavored candies and make it into stuff, you know, kids would like. When I ever got one when I was a kid, I would just tear the whole package open and eat them at once. So you you didn't like this. <laughs> I didn't, but that's how I figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to sell my 1956 Pez space ray gun. I had the opportunity to purchase a very large collection, which included a lot of other vintage toys and collectibles, and uh, this Pez space ray gun was one of those pieces. I don't have any personal sentimental value to it, but it's very nostalgic. This is interesting. I mean, I love Pez. Like, in the 60s, they started making the 3D heads, and they had the little comics on the packaging. Yeah. Uh, I think the first ones had, a, like, a Santa Claus head on them. And they get different licensing deals with, you know, Looney Tunes and all that stuff. And then in the early 90s, there was people out there paying just absolute crazy money for these things. I was just at a candy convention. I went to the Pez people, and they gave me this Pez dispenser. And I looked it up on the internet, and it was already going for $200. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the company's lasted forever, and they're doing something right. And how would you use it? Well, so it has this little piece right here. The cartridge comes out. And then you just put that down like so. And yeah. you're on that. And whenever you would pull the trigger here, the uh, Pez would shoot out the actual front of the gun. OK, I'm sure that got discontinued <laughs> pretty quick. You have kids just sticking a gun in their mouth and shooting candy, right? That exactly. seems kind of bizarre. So what are you looking to do with it? I want to sell it. What are you looking to get? I'm asking $500. Okay, um, I don't know what the market on Pez dispensers is like right now, but one of my biggest issues is there was a massive influx of counterfeit and fake Pez dispensers. Um, mind if I have my buddy Steve come down and take a look? Absolutely. Can we give Steve a call? Sure. I have no problem with an expert coming in. I know it's an original, the item works, and it's in great condition for its age. Got a Pez dispenser. That's what you called me for. I'm trying to put this thing in the candy shop. That's a really cool piece for you to put in the candy shop, although I don't know if you can actually legally sell it or not. No, I want to display it. Why if couldn't I legally display, sell it? display, you could. Why couldn't I legally sell it? Because it was actually taken off the market, because kids had a choking hazard with it. Really? So it discontinued <laughs> for that purpose. Yeah. When you told me what it was, I was like, oh, man, I haven't seen one of these in so long. You know, 1956, this was basically like the third item that Pez offered on the market towards kids. Can I take a look at it? Absolutely. Awesome. Overall, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. And then it looks like you have your gun permit. You can't have a gun without a gun permit. You can't carry without <laughs> the gun permit. That's correct. This was actually your instruction sheet. These are not usually available with the guns because this was the first thing that would go. So it's neat to see that intact and everything. So I think you've got a legit space gun from 1956. So what do you think it's worth? These are really desirable. I think you guys would have no problem getting $450 for it. Well, I appreciate you coming. Cool. Thanks. All Feel right. Later. Thank you. See you later. So remind me again, how much were you looking for? I'm looking to get. $500. What oh, about 250 bucks? How about, uh, how about $400? How about three, you smile, shake my hand, and say yes? Oh, that's a tough one. 300 smiles, shake your hand. <laughs> OK. Deal. Chum, you want to write good. them up? Sure. Good. Let's go write it up. I'm thrilled that I was able to make a deal here today. And while it wasn't exactly what I was looking for, it's enough to buy my wife a wonderful anniversary gift. Hey, how you doing? Good. I'm hoping you can help me with this. A bronze Madonna bust. Go ahead, put it up here. OK. okay. Oh, you're strong. <laughs> Look at you, man. <laughs> well, that's not Madonna the pop singer. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I have an exact cast of Michelangelo's Madonna bust, licensed by the Vatican. They sell for $80,000 if they're legit, and mine is totally legit. If I get what I want for this, I'm going to let my wife renovate the kitchen however she wants. This is pretty cool, man. 
And this is supposed to be the Virgin Mary, right? Correct. It comes from the Pieta made by Michelangelo. The original is in the Vatican. It's pretty neat. Michelangelo is probably recognized as one of the greatest artists of all time, even today. He's best known for the Sistine Chapel and David. He was doing just like these masterpieces, which a lot of the times artists do their masterpieces and they're not really noticed until long after, after they've yeah. passed. Yeah. He was so, a rock star in his time. Yeah, he was a rock star, you know, great artist. He did sculptures like this, he did paintings, he was a poet. The guy's talents were just endless. They never Second to none. Him. Yeah. His work is literally priceless. It's worth a fortune, you know? Millions and millions of dollars sometimes. Why did you pick this up? Well, I barter for everything. So I had the opportunity to trade some artwork for this beautiful piece. It's really cool. It looks like it's in really good condition. Does it have any markings or anything like that on it? It does. It's got the, the, the seal, the license from the Vatican. 154 out of 500. That's it. So the mold was relatively new when they casted this one. Um, you know, sometimes the earlier the mold, the better the casting's gonna be. So that's good, you got that going for you there. It's a beautiful piece. I'm just not sure how sought after they are because Michelangelo himself didn't actually make this. That being said, I'm sure it has some type of value. And how much were you hoping to get? Um, 80 grand, that's what it's valued at. Holy cow. Yeah, I got no idea. <laughs> I know the original is iconic, but this is just like a mold of that. I've got a few questions about it, so I'm definitely going to have to have someone come take a look at it. Yeah. Do you have a few minutes to hang out? Got all day. Take all your right. time. I'll be right back. All right, thanks. This is a real piece, and so I'm happy for anybody to come in and inspect it. They're just going to prove that it is what it is. Hey, Chum. How you good, man? Looking slim, man. Hey, you know, <laughs> trying to get like Madonna. Uh, <laughs> so you have a Madonna del Piatta. What do you think about it? It's absolutely fantastic. You don't see these a lot of times. There's not a ton of them that come on the market. Michelangelo himself considered this work, and of course the David is two greatest works. And it's an exact reproduction of Michelangelo's Madonna del Piatta. This is the only piece that Michelangelo ever signed. And they say the reason he did it is there were tourists even back in his day that went to the Vatican, and they identified it as a different work, and he heard them, and he carved his name right into it. Oh, that's pretty cool. The mold for this was the marble, so the cast is exact. So with bronze, what you want to look at is any rough spots, any weirdness in the patina. Make sure the markings are right. I see a marking right here. Yeah, 154 that's it. out of 500. Yeah, that's the new Renaissance right there. So that's what you want to see. Very, very, very nice patina on it. There's no damage. This is absolutely legitimate. This is the original new Renaissance that was commissioned by the Vatican. It, it's fantastic. So what do they want for it? <laughs> He's asking 80,000. Tell me what you think. I think that's too high. Who, Kai Koa. This artwork on the secondary market in a gallery, you, it's right around $35,000. But they're selling for 80. If you get it from New Renaissance, it's 80,000. However, there are some on the secondary market. The secondary market's bearing right around 35,000. So it's worth 80, just not today. Yeah, not today. But the workmanship is fantastic. And there's no doubt this is one of the pieces that New Renaissance issued initially. Okay, well, appreciate you coming down. Hey, thanks, John. Take it easy. I'm looking at like 20 grand. No. Um, 25? 23,000 is, is, is where I feel comfortable. Okay, I got a deal for you. I'm like the barter king, so I trade for everything. I saw you had 100 pounds of silver, and that's about $24,000 if my math is correct. It'll get it out of your way, you'll get this out of my way. Yeah, so long as the math checks out, I can do that deal. Okay, right. let's check it. Meet me up at the counter, I'll bust the calculator out and figure out where we're at. Thank you very much. Sounds good. All right. I'm thrilled, I made a sale today. Instead of the $23,000 that he offered, I was able to get $24,000 worth of silver, 100 pounds. His cost in it may be a lot less, and the value to me is a lot more. 
Oh All right. My. Oh my, Lily. There she is. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> nice doing business with you. Thank you very much. I love it. I'm making this deal because I'm going to show Rick how to buy something with something in the shop and then turn around and make a profit bigger than the profit I could have made if I paid cash. Out we go. <laughs> what can I help you with? Oh, I'd like to sell my gold medal. What kind of guy sells his own Olympic medal? My wife decided she needed furniture more than she needs this. My wife thinks we need furniture more than the Harley, and I just think it's ridiculous. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to see if I could sell my 1984 sample gold Olympic medal. I'd like to sell this for $2,000, but I'd probably settle for $1,000. So where in the world did you get this? Well, I had a pawn shop, and in 1987, this was brought in to me to pawn. OK. I see it's a sample. How did the person get it to pawn it to you? He worked for Jostens, which is the manufacturer of the gold medal at that time. Yeah, I know the salesmen used to take these around to the schools with them when they were selling the class rings. This is the goddess Nike right here. It's in great shape. When the modern Olympics started in the late 1800s, they gave out gold medals to the winners of each event. To this day, they still give out gold medals, and they can be worth a lot of money. Was there anything really important about the 84 Olympics? Yeah, this was the second time the Olympics were in LA. There's a lot of controversy about everyone who got the gold medals. They say, well, it really doesn't count as much since the Russians weren't there. What happened was the Russians invaded Afghanistan, so we had boycotted their Olympics. So in 84, they came up with an excuse to boycott our Olympics, and then we invaded Afghanistan later. <laughs> right. Olympic medals can be worth anywhere from thousands of dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars. But one given out to a well-known athlete like Carl Lewis or Michael Phelps, that would be priceless. So what did you want for it? I wanted to get 2,000 for it. Mmm. The problem with an Olympic medals is there's so few that come on the market, it's really hard to come up with a price. You know, I, I don't mean to insult or anything, but I'd give you like 300 bucks for it. Wouldn't split the difference with me, 1,000? No, I'd go like 350. The problem is it's a sample, it's in a nice case and everything, but it's still not the real deal. Right. I mean, I have the other Olympic medals, they've been sitting here forever. I think this would be, be even harder to sell. I mean, 350 would be it, man. worth more than that. I have to pass. OK. Thank you. Thanks for bringing it in, though. I appreciate it. I'm disappointed I couldn't sell my medal, but I feel that it is worth more than what they have right now.